Let's do it. Hello, welcome along. I'm Anna Rijanik and welcome to my first video of the year, um, which happens to be a live stream, which happens to be talking about the Mandela Effect. If I'm looking at you right now, you're watching this live. Thank you for dropping by. Feel free to leave some comments. Um, this is going to be a little bit of uh, a hot mess because it's a live stream, right? Um, so if I'm looking at you right now, you're watching this live, feel free to comment. We'll talk about your comments, address conversation in between the segments. Um, there will be video segments playing throughout. If I'm looking at you now, hey, welcome back. You're watching this in high definition <laughs> without any Wi-Fi interference. Uh, and you might not be able to talk or see any of the live stream, but if anything interesting crops up, if anyone even comments, I might just pop it at the sidebar there so you can see how the conversation went while this whole thing was streaming. I've got a wave. Hi, Sky. <laughs> How's it going? Um, so the purpose of this video, last year I made a couple of videos called The Method Behind the Madness, part one, part two, and I always, always promised to make a part three. Um, and it was basically some tricks and tips for creators on YouTube who make videos about the Mandela Effect to make them better, make them smarter, make them more effective. Um, and so we're going to be talking about live streams and I thought it would be ironic and, and just highlight some of the issues with doing live streams so that people can learn from my mistakes and, and make their videos better. And at the same time, we might discuss Mandela Effect itself and debunk it a little bit. Um, so I think that's a good lead into this. Uh, we're going to be looking at three, uh, three different what do you want to call them? Subjects. Hey, we've got somebody else. Ange, talk about my comment. Talk about my comment? Okay. Nice comment. I like your font. I like your emojis with the uh, with the unicorn. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to go ahead and play, if I can get this working, segment one of the uh, of the of the video that you're tuned into right now. So uh, you'll see the three subjects we're talking about. We'll talk a little bit more about the structure um, of this video as we go on. Um, and it's going to be interactive. So if you are watching, feel free to jump in a, a, and talk at any point. And, um, and, and yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So uh, let's just transition this and start the show. Has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little us does. Meet Scott Harrison. Now this particular video sample was streamed on the 7th of March, with no visuals at first aside from him not realising that he was live, and then his intro playing to an icon of his channel. Uh, a poorly edited KitKat logo where you can see where they stretched out the circle around KitKat to include the dash. That doesn't actually exist. I'm not making fun of him for this to be honest, it's, it's really hard to get the timing right on these sorts of things, and some of the broadcasting software is really cut and dry, and even he is aware of this. Uh, hello guys, um, I don't know if this is working, if you can hear me or, or what, my camera's not on. What's happened to my camera? What? Oh, guys, what a disaster this has been tonight. Oh, I'm a back. The whole point of this video that I'm making is actually to display how live streams are a really ineffective way to get through to your subject matter because you're relying on something that is volatile. Did you not even have the video at the start? That's fucking marvellous, isn't it? It was me intro. <laughs> so at least he admits it and he dives straight into some really powerful content. Yeah, how are you feeling, Charles, by the way? It's a very good question, that, actually. I should have been asking that right at the start. Um, you was having trouble with your eyes, weren't you? I, I hope you're feeling much better now, mate, but let us all know. Eric Crafts in, hello, Eric. You know, to grip uh, his audience think, straight away. guys, we've got to the bottom. There, lovely. Right, okay. I can't see anything now. I, I can't. I just, I'm lost. It's funny to me that he mentions that he's forgotten how to use the software over time. Something that you almost develop muscle memory for. Uh, I've not been able to set up on my normal software, my XSplit software. So I'm back on the old Google Hangouts. It's the only thing that seems to work. I'm lost. I've not used this software for bloody ages. So this would suggest that he has some type of memory deficiency. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this tonight um, because, quite frankly, not being able to use that software has, has really knackered me up. I don't know how well I'm oh. going to be able... 
There we go, there I am. You know that phrase, it's like riding a bike? I don't want to sound like I'm having a go at the guy, but any validation to his argument that the Mandela effect is real is backed up by his claim that he can remember stuff from quote unquote the old universe really well. Yet he can't remember how to use this old software. And it's not like he's used it only a few times. He's what I'd call a dab hand at live streams. Anyway, that is Scott. We'll come back to him later. I, I get a bit rowdy sometimes, don't I? <laughs> uh, the next person that we're going to look at is from a channel called Jams TV. And this was streamed on November the 16th. And what the heck? Why? Why is there a UFO? What the f- <laughs> Jesus, the quality on this production. This is crazy. How many views did this get? Oh. oh What's going on, guys? Shit. It's your boy Jimmy Jams back live again. Like always, I got my crew with me. I got Brain, Optimus Prime, Ronnie the Rat, Hector from Tijuana. Voltron and the stripper in the back holding down the pole is Miss Daisy. Well, already he's off to a ripping start. This is a hard-hitting content right here. He's got Optimus Prime and Voltron and a stripper and a fully animated minute-long intro that I'm not sure who he paid to make for him uh, or who's actually seeing it. Um, then he's got a really poorly chroma keyed 720p video of himself over top of all of this and a thumbnail for his merch store. I don't know who's, who's buying stuff from his merch store, but this video is already off to a really hot mess. I think that's enough of the, the intro to his video there. We'll come back to Jimmy Jams later. Uh, for now, all I can really say is that at least he had everything running smoothly. There's no airtime between his intro and his presentation, so, so for that, I mean, so far he's going okay. It's an improvement on Scott so far. So let's see what our next subject, I am Laszlo, can produce. And just as a disclaimer before we dive into this, after my last video I made on Laszlo, he went on a triad in my comment section, uh, tried to have a couple of copyright strikes levied against me, and subsequently deleted all of his comments on the video when he realized that YouTube would probably see them when they reviewed the flag that he put on my video. So, uh, I mean, I still have them all here. Maybe there's a full video's worth of content here in the future, if, if that's something you guys are interested in. But the one thing he made clear, his final comment was that, his lord and his angels would make my life a living hell if I ever tried this again. And I look at that comment, and I look at one of his latest videos. So you're probably wondering, where the hell is Laszlo? What has he been doing? Well, I've been in jail for like a week because of a traffic violation. And yeah, it sounds like I'm, I'm gonna try that again. And uh, <laughs> if I'm gonna be going to hell, at least he's gonna be getting a roommate. I Am Laszlo has 22,000 subscribers, so more than twice that of the two other samples that we've been looking at on this video. It's a huge base of dedicated fans. He live streamed the following video on the 23rd of September, followed by two others which were of degrading quality, not just video wise, but also the presenter himself. All three of the videos were quickly deleted for reasons that you'll see shortly. Now I managed to scrape two of the videos before Laszlo had the sense to delete them and I think it's best that you just watch the first one minute and five seconds of his first video, the, you know, the intro into this live stream, uninterrupted, unnarrated, unabridged, uh, and then we can talk about it later. So here it goes. Hey, I'm a real... Yes, I exist. Part of you Illuminati, I, I am here to destroy them. I am going to destroy the Illumi. That is my mission. I am not dead by their destruction. It will destroy them when I'm dead. No, I swear I'm gonna get I'm gonna get them mission, man. I'm gonna destroy the Illuminati. I'm gonna I'm gonna burn down until they're pulling at their feet. And you know what? E even though I only have a few thousand ever You know what? Thousand views here and there. Thousands of people, 1,000 people turns into 20, 10,000 people, thousands of people, a lot is heard in private, <laughs> so it's done. 
So oh, that's Laszlo. Up. The reason that the quality was so bad is because he films this in a trailer outside of his house, probably as far away from the Wi-Fi router as he can possibly get. Uh, he's tried filming this before inside the house in previous live streams, but his dad basically kicked him out. Oh, right? I don't know, I'm really... I know, I know, no. Are you living in a damn nursing home? Mm. Get the fuck out. I gotta go to bed. Mm. Hey, quit talking outside. Okay, go to bed. <laughs> I, got, I got my show, man. I gotta do my show, so... Just don't talk too loud. Okay. Can I can I borrow a small coffee? No, maybe. No. <laughs> Everybody's. Just keep your voice down. I yeah. heard you. All right, mm -hmm. deal with it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Secondly, the inmates don't like it. Uh huh. They'll call the uh. Get out of here. Okay. Okay. Nice to see you, man. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, see you later. Can okay, have fun. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, see you later. <laughs> uh, so that that was my that was my dad. Uh, he's he's a cool guy. At this stage, I almost feel bad for the guy. I mean, I probably would if he had any shred of human decency left in him. But uh, that's beside the point. I, I can see why he's deleted this stream as well. Okay, so. I didn't know there was that many people on here, but... Uh. So there you have it. These are the three intros to what is promising to be three really exciting live streams about the Mandela Effect. We'll just take a quick break from this. We'll jump back to Live Nick, see how he's going, and uh, then we'll, we'll continue with the rest of the segment, the other segments in this video. So back to you, future Nick, who's also Live Nick, and, and then we'll come back to past Nick again. Sounds like I said parsnip there. I didn't say parsnip. I said parsnip. Okay, we're going now. Oh god, we're back. <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, and that went kind of smooth, I think. Um, so that was the first segment. That was the a look into the character of, of the people we're going to be talking about. Um, so we've got some action, some activity on the live stream. Didn't expect that. So thank you very much um, for Ange for dropping by and giving us kind of a running commentary, that's awesome. Um, and we've got Scotty Balow dropping in, um, given that Laszlo is a tool, um, but Jams and Harrison are gods among men. So I appreciate that you have dropped by and that you've given that feedback, because from what I see from my um, kind of, uh, what do you want to call it, critical point of view, um, uh, the word will come to me at 2 o'clock this morning, um, cynical, that's the one, my cynical point of view, is that everyone sort of loves Laszlo and, and props him up because he's got so many subs. Um, so it is good to see that there are some dissenters that kind of see him for what he is. Um, I don't disagree. I think Jams actually has some wholesome content. Um, you'll notice I put a little asterisk, 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 around um, that uh, Laszlo has the most subscribers. That was at the time that I took all this footage back in November. Uh, and it's probably worth noting that Jams TV, who was at like four or five thousand at the time that I filmed this all, um, he's now at 18,000, and that's because he's changed the focus of his channel uh, to look more at Takashi69, to look more into entertainment industry, and and give his focus and his personality and his take on all of that. Uh, so, sorry, I keep looking at this camera that, that I know is recording, even though you guys are all on here. Um, and I think that has, has been a, really benef a real benefit for his channel, because people see what he's really like, and they, they hear stuff that he really interests them and, and he gives his own personal take on the whole prison sentencing thing and it's actually quite interesting I, I enjoy that and I talk about that in my outro and in this next segment a little bit as well about how if they just took their own creativity and, and their own juices and, and put that somewhere else um, that they could probably turn around their channels and, and make some really wholesome content and I think that just the Mandela effect in general and denying what is reality is a little bit toxic. That's where I'm coming from. You have commented again, um, so I'll just read your comments. I know them both. Pers uh, I know them both personally. I like them both a lot. I don't know Laszlo, so I'm probably biased. I like that you admit that. Um, so yeah, I, I get what you're saying, um, and I do think, like to a certain degree, and I will touch on this in my outro. Um, that Scott, um, yeah, he he's a he seems like a nice guy. Uh, and he's likable as well, but um, I just think some of the things, and we'll cover this off in the next two segments, but I think some of the things he does is a little bit underhanded. Um, and then you've got a message here that's held for review because you swore. I like that. Um, I know I hate that shit, but he likes rap. 
<laughs> I'm going to show that. That's fine. We don't really censor stuff like that on this channel. Um, so th thanks for dropping by, Scotty Balo. Um, be keen to hear uh, some more of your observations as we go forward. I might just be nitpicking, and that's fine. You can disagree with me if you like. Um, but we're going to go into segment two now, unless anyone else is watching this. And I know there's a lag, so if you are watching, you're going to already miss this. But feel free to comment, and we'll, we'll talk to you in the next part. Um, but segment two is just being moved up to the top. I'm going to transition it over now so you can't see my ugly face. And uh, we're going to start playing this in just a few ticks. We're now going to look into the content that these channels cover. These are all channels that claim to specialize in the Mandela effect. So it'd be interesting to see how far they can push that topic in a live stream and what other content they can drag up to fill in the time. Bear in mind that each of these streams goes on for over an hour. Let's start with Laszlo, shall we? Who has titled this video, Ask Laszlo Anything. And indeed his viewers seem to be interested in the Mandela Effect, which he tries his best to explain. No, it's not crazy that things are changing. It's it's that you are you are changing. It's not you. It's not things are changing. Nothing's changing. You are changing. People are not understanding that. Oh, it's so simple. <sighs> Aside from this, he spends time listening to music and spent over two minutes making a complete mockery of one of the most revered songs in popular music history. And he spends most of the other time trying to convince his audience that he's actually a real person. Hey, I'm a real... Yes, I exist. Yes, I'm a real person. Hey! I'm a real person, man! Like, what the fuck? Okay. My existence is basically your illusion. It is such a shame that hardly any of his audience saw the stream, because this is the real Laszlo, a, a show pony with less sense than he has bandwidth. Or maybe that low turnout on his livestream is just a reflection of how his channel is slowly dying. Anyway, we've <laughs> beaten this dead show pony a little bit too much right now. Let's move on to Scott. Let's see how he plans to fill in this almost two hour long live stream. Um, but I shall try my best. Now, let me get into my emails here. I've had an e email last night off Twin Flames uh, from Two Frequency Radio. Um, and it was about the Schumann residents going off the scale. So he kicks things off with a bit of an agenda. He wants to talk about something called the Schumann Resonance, which is the name of the resonant frequency of Earth's magnetic field, which at the time had increased and was big news. I covered this in a video about people who thought that time was speeding up, uh, which I'll link at the end of this video. But did you notice how he didn't call it the Schumann Resonance? It was about the Schumann residents going up the scale. The Schumann residents, the Schumann residents, the Schumann residents. He called it the Schumann Residence. As in what Robert Schumann would say if you called his house. Hello, Schumann residence here. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking this dig because, like with his spelling errors that he's made. As an example, aspirin. Now, when I reported that aspirin had changed, it was because I'd just been typing it in, in uh, Rob Wood's live chat. And it spell corrected me and i was like what the fuck it has changed here's another example of a word or phrase or just something in general that scott has gotten plain wrong and will later learn was the other way around and instead of taking the high road of correcting and bettering himself he'll take the egotistical path of convincing you that there was another reality where he's from where he was correct uh, it's a spell check that, that alerts me to most Mandela effects. I think, oh, no, I've definitely spelt that right. No, I've spelt definitely wrong as well, apparently. Uh, <laughs> uh, once you get rid of ego, you can truly be free. PlayStation, 100% agree, mate. And Scott actually has this in common with the other two samples that we have in this video. Oh, we've all got one thing in common. Jimmy Jams made a critical error spelling uh, with some t-shirts that he was trying to sell in his line of merchandise. Jesse got her a shirt too. Okay, and guys, I, I haven't sent the, the change to uh, Teesprings yet, so that shirt that says this is not my reality is spelled wrong. Okay, but uh, 
In my reality, that's how it was spelled. <laughs> Which is fucking hilarious. Uh, I, oh my god, it's just so beautiful. And even Laszlo manages to sing the wrong lyrics in the wrong verse during Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm just a little man. Back to Scott though, this isn't the only subject that he plans to cover in his live stream. Uh, <laughs> although I will be playing a video in a little bit um, of somebody who was trying to debunk my time video. Hold on a second. That was my video from before. I I'm, I'm on it. I'm shocked. I mean, I'm obviously feigning surprise, even though I've been building up to this moment for the past 10 months or so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've, I've, I've been aware of this for a while. He's apparently planning to play my video on this live stream, which is great. I, I get an awesome cameo in a Mandela Effect live stream, which is uh, something on the bucket list there for me. So way to go, me. I'll do a proper video on that at some point, a, a real response to his video. Oh wait, he's he's going to do a proper critique on it later, in another video. He'll do a proper video on it. Well, I'm still waiting for that. He seems the kind that's got the ego. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm not the one who's insisting that I'm not wrong, but that reality is wrong. Do you not see the irony in that? Did they, did they have irony in the reality that you came from? Because this is, oh my god, this is just rich. He was... He was reasonable in the way he was speaking, in some ways, anyway. Um, well, thank you, I guess. I mean, I'm a pretty reasonable guy. You could reach out to me and, and talk to me if you want to. Uh, feel free to comment in the live stream if you're actually watching this at the time that this broadcasts. I'd, I'd be happy to talk to you on air when the segment's finished. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be keen for that. Much later on in the video, the topic of my video comes up again with one of his viewers who says, You wouldn't be able to time your debunk your time video unless he's inside the same reality you are charles you when i show you the video mate you'll see he doesn't debunk anything and that's correct i cannot debunk his video because he said something was true and then conducted an experiment to prove that it was true where one of his controls was flawed therefore proving nothing i can't debunk a flawed experiment i can however shine a light on the fact that the control that he was using does not reflect what he's claiming as truth which i think i did adequately Watch the video for yourself if you're not convinced. He says, one of his arguments, um, he says, why don't you use a clock with seconds on it? He says, I assume you might be using those colons there, but they don't represent seconds. Well, the fuck does he think they represent on a clock? I mean, <laughs> what, what are they representing? Half seconds? No, it doesn't work. I've done the count. It counts 60 times and then it switches to the next minute. And we can do that if you want tonight. Do it. Do it. Prove me wrong. Um, but it will be a very boring minute of our lives, although it'll go very fast. It'll only be like half a minute. <laughs> but of course, he's not going to prove me wrong, because apparently taking one minute out of his 145 minute long live stream to prove me wrong would be too boring. Plus, he could spend that minute relighting his cigarette that keeps going out. If you think that would be boring, well, <laughs> boy, are you in for a treat right now. Uh, right change as it does I can see I've got loads of emails like that and uh, I haven't got back to any I don't think I just went on and did a live stream yesterday just to say look I'm fine <laughs> Democracy is an illusion. Um, and to us, the Queen is fucking nobody and nothing. She's just some fucking lizard from another fucking planet or whatever that, that's come over here and has imposed her rule upon us. I don't like the woman at all. Um... So that's enough for Scott for now. I, I think I've, I've been a little bit, maybe a little bit too mean to him. So we'll move on to Jimmy Jams. Let's see what he's up to. All right, let me find this, this, this button. There we go, right here. Bam! 
All right, let's see what this guy is talking about. A glitch in the matrix. If my mouse will work. Friends, for tuning in to another exciting episode of The Spiritual Scientist. You're here with Victor Hamza, and we have some interesting things for you. Look, that's how you make sure that a cigarette is lit and it stays lit. I mean, that's... He, he's got like a proper butane lighter going on right there. Does Laszlo have anything like that? Does he even smoke? I don't smoke anymore. I quit smoking, okay? I don't want to lose my voice. Actually, I actually got uh, I actually got uh, throat surgery when I was a kid. I actually died when I was 11 years old. I, I, had, to get, I had black mold poisoning. I had to get cut. And that's why I have such a dark voice. <laughs> Fuck's sake. All right, let's jump back to Jimmy Jam. What exactly does he cover in his content? Yeah, um, and I'm going to pull up the Jamatron. We're going to go into some stuff. It's supposed to be some North Korean uh, proof that there's a glitch in the Matrix. So uh, let me pull this video up for you guys. All right, let me find this, this, this button. If my mouse will work. Friends, for tuning in to another exciting episode of The Spiritual Scientist, you're here with Victor Hamza. Okay, so his live stream is basically just him watching another person's live stream. Believe it or not, this is what Scott does as well. I think it was just a coincidence we went up at the same time. I'd have been up half an hour earlier if um, everything had have been bloody working. Um, I hate crossing over with him because... Should we see what he's up to? <laughs> we'll, see, we'll, we'll check in on him. But Jimmy Jams is a little bit more open to the fact that he blatantly steals content. That's going to be 10 Mandela effects. I'm just going to steal them from other people. And effectively, it's just a cheaper production of Jams TV because it doesn't even have a intro song. And let's play the theme song. I don't really have a theme song, so if you want to send me one, maybe we'll come up. The trouble is that the video that he's playing, he doesn't offer any transformative dialogue to this. He's not discussing what the spiritual scientist is talking about. In fact, he actually keeps interrupting the video with just trivial shit that comes up in the chat of his live stream. Um, here at home cleaning the weeds outside. Jesse, North Korea. you spilled your beer on yourself. Well, you need to go to an alcohol class because that is definitely 100%. Um, alcohol abuse. Yo, bro. Oh, wow. I literally just turned off this video to come over here. Well, see, uh, like minds think alike. I seen it and said, oh, well, this might be something interesting to watch. The glitch is going on in the Matrix. I thought she was going to say you, you tripped in a crack house. Let's talk for a minute about what's um, going on. The one you made yesterday. Uh, I watched some of the video, but I don't know if I played it. So that we have something crazy going on we have some that's it uh the variety show uh in the i seen the flip-flop we watched that one up here but i don't think we watched the variety show one yet tau seti thank you i just got this chair it got a little pillow look there is one Hold point on, guys, where he goes to get, get another smokes. cigarette and he okay, lets right the back. video run for his audience but because he keeps jumping between taking live calls which he mutes to screen first and uh and playing this video he actually forgets to unmute the video so we're left just watching minutes and minutes of the spiritual scientist uh talking about something that we can't even hear okay i don't know what this guy was talking about but i was hoping that last caller was going to actually drop me off some pizza because i could I probably could eat a pizza right about now. Um, so, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. We couldn't hear it anyway. Oh, okay. Shit, I keep forgetting to unmute it. That's just that's just spectacular. Okay, moving on. But aside from all of this, would you believe that there's actually some really entertaining content in these live streams? If you really drill down to it, the very, <laughs> the very baseline, that there is something there that made me smile and genuinely entertained me. The only catch is that the content had nothing to do with the Mandela effect. If this was the only content that these channels focused on, I'd actually find them very entertaining for various reasons. Uh, instead of me explaining this to you, I'll just show you for yourself. In one of my ghost stunts in the church, just just 
up the road from me. When I was doing a ghost hunt there at one point, uh, I was sat next to the doors. I'd sat in front of the door, sat on a slug as well, which I didn't realise. That, that wasn't pleasant for me or the slug. And um, I had the spirit box on. I'm, ju I'm just generally talking out. I'd only just got the thing. I'm sat there and I pointed it towards the doors and this really evil sounding voice come through and it goes, back <laughs> off. You know, you know, I don't like that. <laughs> I was in the church with, with our local vicar, Martin. I was telling him about the Mandela effect and the Bible changes. I was interviewing him. As we walked towards the doors, the front doors of the church, we were side by side talking and the door slammed shut and this voice come through. Back off. He was like, what's going on here? And I'm like, it's just an evil spirit that's trying to lock you out of, of, of the church, you know. And he went to grab the handle. I said, don't, don't grab the handle. Why? I went, just don't grab it. And I, I, I picked up this urn of water off Betram Vasseur's grave. Uh, he comes through and he, he says, it's Betram Vasseur. Betram Vasseur, what was his first name? Um, begins with A. But anyway, um, so I grabbed the urn of water and I said I'm sorry I replace the water in this shop but I need it and I threw the water over the handle and all steam came off and then I grabbed it quick and opened it this was all a dream this isn't this wasn't happening in real life and um, um, and I banished this evil entity from the church and it was just a really weird dream to have Jimmy, have you heard anything about Wild Man? Last I heard, he was in Hampton Roads Regional Jail because he punched this dude in the head with a pair of brass knuckles, which is the girl I dated all in high school I went to prom with. It's her boyfriend, right? And, uh, you know, instantly when Wild Man got locked up, I hit her up and said, you know, hey, that's my homeboy. You know what I'm saying? What the hell y'all doing? You know, plus the wild man punched her old man in the head. And, uh, and she was like, Look, we didn't call the police on wild man. Security called the police on wild man. We didn't, uh, they hit, they tackled him or something. Security didn't held him there until the police got there. Wild man been drinking for two days. I was out drinking with him one night, right? And then the next night, he never stopped. He called me up, and I was like, Man, I'm hungover from last night. He kept going. And then I guess he drank all that night into the next day, into the evening. And then, you know, on a two day binger, uh, homeboy said something slick to Wild Man. Wild Man put on a pair of brass knuckles, walked outside, punched this young ass in the head. Wild Man's an old dude, but he's, he's fucking wild, right? I mean, that's why we call him Wild Man. If I'd have been there, the shit would have never happened. Because I'd have been like, Wild Man, don't pay that dude no mind. You know what I'm saying? But I was hungover. Shit happens. You, you know what you're getting with Wild Man when you get Wild Man. I mean, it's a motherfucker with a Nazi tattoo big as my head. And, uh, you know, looks like Santa Claus. Old as hell. And his name is Wild Man. I mean, what can you expect? Like a little shit that I would take disrespectful and I would wipe off my shoulder. Wild Man ain't gonna wipe that shit off his shoulder. He's gonna, uh, he's gonna punch you in the head with some brass knuckles like he did homeboy. Alright, let me take this call. So when I, when I, when I saw my first, um, being, it came to me, the, the first being that came to me, I was so scared. I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be, this is going to, I was so scared and I, it attacked, it was, it attacked me. I was, and I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. I was like, and I, somehow I got, and I, I punched that. I punched an alien in the face. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I did. And he went, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm not high. No, I'm not high. I'm completely sober right now. I know they're real. I know they're real. I would, I, oh, it was a great, I know it was a great. I, I punched it. I punched it in the face. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Um, the, the graves. <laughs> The gr the greys are um the greys are are the they're the drone race they're the they're the they're the they're drone race. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that that segment. Um, obviously a, a few surprises in there. 
um, we were talking about the content of, uh, of what people put forth and obviously I was talking about prior to this how these these youtubers could totally transform what they talk about to something more constructive and when, when they talk about constructive stuff it's quite interesting there's uh there's a lot that um scott harrison has to say uh that's quite frankly interests me and, and i'd love to see that sort of content but he he milks it with the mandala effect stuff which uh, i think is a little bit just a, a little bit tedious uh, and overdone um jimmy jams has a lot of interesting life stories that he can share with us uh, wild man, pretty wild. Um, and Laszlo, uh, yeah, in, in his own reality, that stuff is, is really interesting. And, and I'm sure people would like to hear more of that. Not me personally, but I had I took a lot of fun making that animation. So thank you for, for your comment, Ange, about my animations being amazing. I think so as well. Otherwise, I wouldn't put them in. I would have gone, this is a waste of time, and just did the live stream. Um, and anyone who says that they are a real person gets two out of three strikes off the bat. I agree. Uh, there hasn't really been a lot of other activity in the chat. To be honest, I think the live stream is a little bit dead. But before I put segment four forward, I could see the, because we had quite a few interactions, and I could see the appeal of doing a live stream. So I, I can kind of understand now that I'm in the heat of the moment um, why these guys have done it and, and why they continue to do it on an ongoing basis. And uh, as we'll see when we go into segment three here in just a moment, you'll see why Laszlo keeps deleting his as well. Uh, <laughs> um, so we'll have some fun with that. We'll keep going. Uh, if, if anyone else logs in, feel free to jump in and chat. I read all your comments, even if it's retrospectively. So uh, if you're watching this through this camera, hi, welcome along again. I, I haven't forgotten you're here, um, but I'm not alive right now. I'm, I'm in the future and you're in the past watching this. Um, so we'll roll on with segment three. Once I get that up to the batter's plate here, going with the the baseball analogies that my friend uh, Scotty Balos put forward. We're going to jump right into segment three right now. So stick with me. It's a little bit of a long one. Uh, and then we've got an outro. And um, yeah, feel free again if you are watching this to jump in into the comment section. I'm, I was really hoping that I'd get the attention of some of these people I'm making the video of because I think it'd be interesting if uh, Laszlo, if you jump by, Scotty, if you're watching, and Jimmy Jams, if you're watching this, yeah, jump into the chat because I'd love to have a talk to you about what you think about my comments and just in your, your channels and yourselves in general. I think that would be an interesting interview. Um, so we're going to transition this over and here comes segment three. <coughs> segment three, my, my voice went a bit weird there. Why isn't this working? Here we go. Ah, it doesn't seem to like segment three. Segment three, boom. Transition. All right, what's happening here? Hmm. Yeah, the file's there. Segment three edited and complete. Open. It's in there twice. We don't want it to be in there twice, so we'll remove the first one. And we're going to go OK. This is a problem. This is why people don't do live streams. <laughs> it all started off so good. Okay, we're gonna go this. We're gonna go this one with the top. We're gonna go down to here. VLC video media source. Okay, browse. Add file. Segment three. Okay, and. Where is it? Is anyone seeing this? This is a total failure. Total failure here. I'm feeling a little bit bummed because everything was running so smoothly. All right, let's quality check this. Where is the actual file? Live stream segments. Segment three edited and complete. We might have to run with something else here. Open with VLC media player. <laughs> uh, they're tons of charm, right? So far, it is. it's working, it's fine. So why can't you guys see that? Okay, we're going to do a little bit of movie magic here. You guys don't normally see this. But I'm going to add desktop capture mode, display capture. Okay. 
this is going to be a little bit painful because now I need to move my whole suite from one desktop to the other so I can capture one. And that's going to put me out. So I apologize for this. Now I'm looking like a bambling idiot. Uh, move my audacity over here. Maximize that. You guys are going to see some pop-ups from a um, from a whole bunch of unrealistic body check this out type because I've, I've got some malware on this computer right now try and ignore the pop-ups <laughs> as we go through this um, display source media shrink oh my god this is this is embarrassment right here and I thought everything was going so good okay Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there, just stretching out the file so it will fit across. We might lose a little bit of, there's a bit of litter boxing happening now because the file I've created isn't the exact shape of the file I'm casting, um, but that's okay. All right, um, you guys need some desktop audio, which I've hidden, so now I need to unhide that desktop audio. And you might hear a couple of pops in the live stream as well. Which one, which one is the live one? So far we've looked, oh, you guys might've heard that. That's good, we've got that live. We'll go back a second. All right, I am going to go away now. I'm gonna transition us over. So far we've looked at the character and the content of these creators, now, but now we're going to delve into the darkest of the three C's, the conduct. All right. You see, Sorry on the surface, we seem to have these three guys who just want to spread their messages of enlightenment, uh, and, that and the universe is not what it seems. And while that may be true, there are certain aspects of their conduct that it not only negates the positive vibe that they're trying to express, it downright contradicts what they're all about. Let's start with Scott one more time. Scott comes across as a bit of a prominent figurehead in the Mandela community. He claims he was behind raising a lot of awareness of it on YouTube. And I was one of the people that, the that sort of, you know, got this community together at the start. Um, to but I certainly wasn't one of the first to actually discover it. Um, I just felt this this urge to create a place on, on, on YouTube where I could tell people what I was going through. Because as much as I knew I'd be seen as mad by the most people, it wasn't them I was speaking to, it was you. Let's start with Scott. It was people in my situation that were looking out there and saying, what the fuck's going on with the world? And getting no answers. And I wanted to put out the answers that I'd, I'd got at that point. Um, and just also, just as a reassurance thing to people that, you're not mad, this is happening. He runs his live streams almost as a kind of sermon where his misguided viewers can come to seek his advice for an almost hypochondrical condition of being from another universe. Do you remember Thomas Larson? Do you remember the yellow sun? I do. I do. It was so much nicer. You could look at it all day long. Can't do that with this one, can you? <laughs> what? These people flock to Scott's live streams to seek advice and confirmation bias, which he tries to supply. However, sometimes his advice contradicts itself, like when he tried to reveal that the dodo was still alive. Um, but, the, you know, there's worlds out there where there's creatures that were extinct that aren't now. Well, we're already in that world. The fucking dodo was back. Um, then when his avid viewers asked to see it, he told them just to Google it. Oh, Jamie's in. Show us a dodo. Hey. <laughs> Cheeky. Um, I've, I've not got my usual shit set up, mate. I, I, fuck it, I had so much planned. <laughs> um, I, I, what I've got to do is find the video of them flying with the drone, but you can Google it yourself. And you'll find several accounts of people saying, you know, now, look, you there's dodos, his, his pictures of it. So uh, the dodo birds, just, just sorry to Google it, mate. Oh, Joe, Joe whisper Joe's in. But when Google couldn't show them what he was talking about, he tried to Google it himself to negative results. It was a, right, everyone's mad about his bloody dodos. Sorry, I bloody mentioned them now. Right, let's get the fucking dodos up there. <laughs> Let me share my screen with you as I type this because I want you to see exactly what comes up. Dodo, look, found a live drone. Right. <laughs> but look, you can see here there's loads of people saying about it. Um, 
No, I can't find the one that I watched, which is the one I wanted to show you because it it was genuine and All right, we're going. you know I I got it blown up on the screen. I slowed it down as I played it and I I satisfied myself. In the end, when one viewer pointed out that Google's top results showed that the dodo is extinct. His best advice was... Dodo is still extinct according to Google. Hello, Great G. Um, don't rely on Google. <laughs> it depends what bit of Google you look at. And when you say according to Google, Google's a search engine. Oh, really? Really? You know, it takes you to search results of various different people and, and pages. Google itself doesn't have the information, it just links to the information. Uh, it depends which bit of information you pick out to look at. Uh, it's like the flat earth, round earth argument. You, you can pick the information and prove it one way or the other. Um, if anyone ever appears in Scott's chats with an opposing view to his main audience, they're quickly removed from the chat and blocked. So the we'll get rid of that. That's bad, man. I'm I'm so sorry, guys. All right, that's done. That was playing this whole time. Ah, oh, shit. All right. We'll do this properly now. Here we go. Desktop audio is active. I'm muting the mic now so you don't hear me slurping my drink. And we're gonna do section three properly. Hello, Nick again. <laughs> Last issue, I swear. It looks like I've been setting the audio to the wrong area. So now, just a quick test run. But now, there it is. The audio is playing. Should have picked up on that. Thanks for your ongoing support, you guys, you two viewers that I have. Loving that. Um, now we can get the shit show really on the road. And we do have to start the segment one more time. I'm going away now again for 20 minutes. I'll still be here just uh, face palming, non audibly. So see you shortly. So far, we've looked at the character and the content of these creators, but now we're going to delve into the darkest of the three C's the conduct. You see, on the surface, we seem to have these three guys who just want to spread their messages of enlightenment that the universe is not what it seems, and while that may be true, there are certain aspects of their conduct that it not only negates the positive vibe that they're trying to express, it downright contradicts what they're all about. 
Let's start with Scott one more time. Scott comes across as a bit of a prominent figurehead in the Mandela community. He claims he was behind raising a lot of awareness of it on YouTube. And I was one of the people that sort of, you know, got this community together. Um, but I certainly wasn't one of the first to actually discover it. Um, I just felt this this urge to create a place on, on, on YouTube where I could tell people what I was going through. Because as much as I knew... I'd be seen as mad by the most people. It wasn't them I was speaking to. It was you. It was people in my situation that were looking out there and saying, what the fuck's going on with the world? And getting no answers. And I wanted to put out the answers that I'd, I'd got at that point. Um, and just also, just as a reassurance thing to people that you're not mad, this is happening. He runs his live streams almost as a kind of sermon where his misguided viewers can come to seek his advice for an almost hypochondrical condition of being from another universe. Do you remember Thomas Larson? Do you remember the yellow sun? I do. I do. It was so much nicer. You could look at it all day long. Can't do it. It was so much nicer. You could look at it all day long. Can't do that with this one, can you? <laughs> what? These people flock to Scott's live streams to seek advice and confirmation bias, which he tries to supply. However, sometimes his advice contradicts itself, like when he tried to reveal that the dodo was still alive. Um, but, the, you know, there's worlds out there where there's creatures that were extinct that aren't now. Well, we're already in that world. The fucking dodo's back. Um, then when his avid viewers asked to see it, he told them just to Google it. Oh, Jamie's in. Show us a dodo. Hey, <laughs> cheeky. Um, I've, I've not got my usual shit set up, mate. I, I, fuck it, I had so much planned. <laughs> um, I, I, what I've got to do is find the video of them flying with the drone, but you can Google it yourself, and you'll find several accounts of people saying, you know, look, there's dodos. Here's, here's pictures of it. Uh, the dodo birds. Just, just Google it, mate. Oh, Joe, Joe Whisper Joe's in. But when Google couldn't show them what he was talking about, he tried to Google it himself to negative result results. It was a, right. Everyone's mad about his bloody dodo. Sorry, I bloody mentioned them now. Right, let's get the fucking dodos up there. <laughs> Let me share my screen with you as I type this because I want you to see exactly what comes up. Dodo, look, found a live drone. Right. <laughs> But look, you can see here, there's loads of people saying about it. Um, no, I can't find the one that I watched, which is the one I wanted to show you because it, it was genuine. And, you know, I, I got it blown up on the screen. I slowed it down as I played it and I, I satisfied myself. In the end, when one viewer pointed out that Google's top results showed that the dodo is extinct, his best advice was... Dodo is still extinct according to Google. Hello, Great Chi. Um, don't. Re Hello, Great Chi. Um, don't rely on Google. <laughs> it depends what bit of Google you look at. And when you say according to Google, Google's a search engine. I really, really. You know, it takes you to search results of various different people and, and pages i was not Google aware itself of this doesn't before, have the information it just links to the information uh it depends which bit of information you pick out to look at uh it's like the flat earth round earth argument you you can pick the information and prove it one way or the other um if anyone ever appears in scott's chats with an opposing view to his main audience they're quickly removed from the chat and blocked so there's never anyone available to challenge him on his views. So what's the deal with the blue wrenches? Can I ask? Thank you. They're just um, moderators, Jetrex, um, there to kick out shills, delete inappropriate messages, i.e. things like, You're all mad. <laughs> delete. Gone. Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> That's one ignorant little bastard that just doesn't need to be listened to. Uh, nice boy, obviously wasn't being very nice. Got blocked by Adam. <laughs> what a twat. Yeah, thanks, nice boy. Not living up to your name, dickhead. And the beauty of this is I get the last say. Twat. 
<laughs> this allows them to make ridiculous claims with no repercussions. With the LGBT community, or LGB as it was originally, um, back on Sagittarius, there was a slight need for it. There, there was... I always thought it was a bit pointless because we was all very accepting of everybody, regardless of what 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 you were into, what what your thoughts, what your beliefs. It was a very live and let live let world, a very live and live let world. Oh God, I can't say it. A very live and let live world. Um, and we quite frankly just didn't care if somebody was gay, if somebody was lesbian, if somebody somebody was bisexual you know it was like well fine you know i'm still in with a chance <laughs> i don't know if anyone from the lgbtq community watches my shows but i'd love to hear from you about a time where you were not discriminated against by the majority of the population over the past century if that claim was true why would the lgbt movement need to exist in the first place it was like look at look at the lgbt if Q R P Z T community. I mean, I've, I've no idea how many letters it's got on it now, but it's another good sign of a shift. They aren't normally pop another letter onto the end of that. When you listen to how he talks, he really is creating his own reality. We don't want to be amongst these people. We want to have our own meeting of our own kind. We are a different kind. We're, we're a different human kind. Um, only because we've just grown up in a different world with different beliefs um, than the world we're in now. But we are a different kind of people. We absolutely are. Alan Herbert's in. Hello, Alan. The most frustrating part of all of this is that he's actually being rewarded by his viewers that he's deceiving. Fucking hell, this chat. What is he doing? Oh, fucking hell, right. Well, he's done it for very good reason. Uh, Texas Danny. Thank you so much, mate. It's just super chatted. Um... I'm getting your sound effects up because... <laughs> uh, no, I really appreciate that. And it wasn't a begging call, that, by the way, guys. Don't feel obliged, please. Um... Super Chat is a function that's available in live streams that allows viewers explicit visibility when they enter a live comment in exchange for a donation. Um, no, I re really do appreciate it, mate. Uh, but it, 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 don't feel obliged. Cory Jade... Bloody hell. Calm down, guys. <laughs> well, don't. <laughs> uh, Curry Jane also super chatted. Thank you. And put some symbol in. That doesn't come up. I'm guessing they love arts. Oh, my God. And Axel Mari as well. <laughs> With a very British 1499. Thank you very much, Axel. <laughs> There we go. I'm not having you go without your sound effects, guys. <laughs> uh, that that is really kind. Of thank you. Although I've no idea where I was in the chat now. <laughs> Scott mentioned several times that he feels bad about enabling this in his chat because he doesn't like taking donations. Guys, thank you. Honestly, don't feel obliged though. It's not why I was saying what I was saying. I, I feel bad when you do that. <laughs> Put me begging out on you know but here's the kicker and some of you who are watching this live stream will already have realized it you don't have to turn super chat on i don't have it on in this live stream because it's optional so if you feel bad about having the option there you can go into the settings and deactivate it and then not mention it if you feel like doing so is wrangling funds from your viewers i get that this is a job for scott and that he has to capitalize somewhere to afford his ghost hunting equipment and that he must also go through a lot of lighters as well. So it can't be too hard on the guy, but people shouldn't be propagating lies and deceiving people. So I don't agree with this method of income. Some of you out there may think that's a bit of a harsh criticism and that he's just using this to make ends meet so that he doesn't have to live in his mum's basement. But... Would you like a nice cup of tea? Oh no, can I have an horrible one, Mum? Go Mom? on then. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, enough of that. Let's move on to Laszlo. <laughs> what can we say about him that hasn't already been said before? Laszlo is an incoherent moron with delusions of grandeur. So, as far as you know, as far as people could possibly imagine, people could possibly not imagine the fact that uh, 
There actually is a... There is a being of... I don't know, a planet? It's so weird. Isn't it weird that there's a planet on top of our planet? I'm not sure if you noticed this during the previous segment, but he has the belief that he's died and being resurrected. Yeah, I've died many times too. Yeah, I get it. No, we I've died many times. Don't worry. I was like, I was like, why am I still here? I was like, why am I still here? I'm, I'm still here. I'm like, oh, that was fun. And then I, and then I get back here and I'm like, oh man, everything's so weird here. It's kind of like someone else we all know. I've seen it all. I had a vision when I was 11 years old, man. I died. I had black mold poisoning. I was in a coma. Uh -huh. I was dead. I was dead. And I, I saw Christ. He came to me and he's like, you have a choice. You can stay. Or you can come with me. And I'm like, I kind of want to stay. He's like, you're not going to stay unless you do something for me. And he showed me this huge vision of everything. I saw it all. But I'm not making the Christ comparison just to be a dick. There's a way that he carries himself and delivers his insight that just seeps a narcissistic quality like he believes himself to be some kind of prophet. There are 144,000 people, okay, across the entire world in sacred geometry. But those people have a bloodline. There's a bloodline of 144,000 people across this planet. And those people are God's people. Yeah, I wish I could do peyote. Yeah, sure. If anything, the live streams do reveal that at least he tries with his mainstream YouTube videos. I was never sure that there was much editing or thought or effort put into them, but after seeing this, I'm pretty convinced now. I like how, um, nobody knows who the fuck I am. Nobody knows. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> alright, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, wait. Tristan, Tristan's here. Tristan, yo. Uh, yeah. He makes repeated claims that he's not high. When I saw my first um, being, it came to me, I'm not high, no, I'm not high. I'm completely sober right now. Um, that he's completely sober throughout, as well as contradicting comments that he's taking drugs. I'm smoking, I'm always smoking the good shit. You know what, it's almost legal. But there doesn't seem to be any affliction to his tone in either case to tell us that he's making a joke or that he's just being sarcastic. No, I didn't do acid, no, no, no. I'm not high, no, I'm not high. And I think that he's genuinely forgotten that he made the claim earlier that he was high or that he was smoking and then that he was and then that he was now sober. But to clarify things, this is him at the beginning of his slew of live streams back in September. So I'm I'm a real I'm a real guy. I can do whatever you want, whatever you want me to look up. I can I can tell you what I know about stuff, stuff. Okay, I'm a real person, man. Like whatever. I'm doing good. I'm a real, I'm a real guy. I fucking, I do whatever I gotta do, man. I'm having fun, man. You gotta have fun. And this is him towards the end, lit falling asleep. So again, it's no surprise to me that he chose to delete these shows and the drunken rants that he goes on. Hi, welcome back. A little bit surprised, are you? Well, I'm not live, Nick. I'm also not past Nick. I'm probably going to regret this in the morning, Nick, because we've just been talking about how Laszlo seems to lose all control <laughs> during his live stream and go on rants. Um, so we're going to listen to a rant right now, but we're going to transform it a little bit. So this, this is going to be a little bit of a game, and you can play this at home as well. You're going to need a couple of shot glasses, and you're going to need a liquor of your choice. And every time that Laszlo says a special word, um, which I'm going to put here, you are going to have to do a drink with me. 
Um, so you can do this uh, at, at the point that I'm saying this. It'll probably on the, the video will probably be up on my Twitter. Um, so you can visit that as well to, to watch the live video, or you can just do it with me now if you happen to have a couple couple of shots ready. If you haven't guessed, oh that's a big one. The secret word is time. So every time he says time, we're going to do a drink. This this game is called Doing Time with Laszlo, since he's done time before. So uh, without further ado, um, let's uh, let's do this. It's only a minute thirty six. So how trashed can you get, really? I love Tool. Tool is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Tool is, Tool is basically, I'm trying to tell you guys something very complicated in, in, a, in a very period of time, okay? I don't have time to explain what I'm trying to explain in a period of time. I'm just, I'm just this guy, okay? I can't do the whole thing. I'm just Laszlo, okay? Oh my god. I'm just a being, I'm just one being in time and space. What I'm trying to say is that we only have a short period of time. Um, I know that uh, time, time, exactly the happening. Um, a crime, <coughs> according to what's going on in my time. Oh, fuck. We have time. We have time. As long as my time. Time is 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 associated with your time. We have probably twenty years. We have twenty years time. Have a, we have time? We have a a conscious. I can't. Time. Consciousness of time is only conscious because of because of a consciousness of of time. Oh fuck you, man. So uh. it it just it just makes time. <laughs> Oh my god. I, didn't, I could not do that. Uh, I've only drank that much. But the, the time just went away. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I've, oh god. <coughs> that was, in hindsight, that was a terrible idea. Um, I don't even know if I want to put this in the video at this point. Um, oh god, it burns. Yeah, I get it. I'm a little bitch, but <sighs> hey, the, uh, my my point here is proven. I think. Back to the live stream. This is the reason why I didn't do it in the live stream. I I I decided to do this like a week before to give me time <laughs> to clear my head. Um, what the fuck was I even on about now? Oh my god. Oh. The really funny thing about Laszlo's live stream is that Jimmy Jam's TV was actually watching this live. Maybe he's done time too. Let's check. Now let me tell you this guys, Jimmy Jams has been locked up, that shit don't happen. Hmm, yeah, there's definitely a connection between these two. So what remains to be said about Jimmy Jams? His conduct throughout the show is a little juvenile. He constantly gets prank calls on his live phone. That's, that's that prank call app. It ain't even a person. It's that app y'all call guys that you call and it like... <laughs> Um, prankhotline.com yeah I knew that's what it was um, but y'all interrupted my good ass wild man story with your prank call given that he's only got about 17 people watching him live and that all of his calls are pranks at some point you'd think that you'd color lines and focus a little bit more on your subject matter rather than letting it all play without volume aside from this criticism there really isn't too much in jam's tv live stream that displays poor conduct he actually goes out of the way to reward his viewers so what i'm thinking is i'm gonna give away some gift cards for like a pizza because a pizza ain't but like 10 bucks these days shit two for five these days you can get a pizza five dollars ten dollars so i'm thinking about giving a pizza away one pizza away every week okay you know, just, you know, that's a good gift, a pizza. Or, you know, um, I give it away and I'll call and order it and have it delivered to you. So while I maintain my bias against the message that the Mandela effect is real, remove that entire subject from the equation and also what's already been said, and there really isn't anything else left to criticize on him. Compared to the other two, he's actually tolerable and a little bit charming.
Actually, while I'm editing this, uh, there is one point I do want to bring up where he kind of perverted the course of justice around Wildman's prosecution. Uh, a man who kind of sounds like you'd probably want to keep him in prison. But what I'm thinking is going to end up happening is is a lot of these charges are going to be dropped, like the uh, assault, because unless the the prosecutor picks it up, because I don't think the dude's going to show up to court. You know, you got no witness. The witnesses ain't going to show up from the bar. You know, because people done said shit to them like, you better not show up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some witness tampering going on. You bitch don't show up against wild man. Oh, what the fuck are you talking about? And that's the end of this segment. So now we're going back live to the studio. We're live. We're live. We're back. I did it. <laughs> we made it through. That part. That that part was hard. Um, I think what's happened is that that entire segment, as you could probably tell, um, it wasn't the bandwidth. It was the actual choppiness of the um, of the video itself. So I'm sorry for that again. That's a bit shitty. I'm not even recording this on the main camera. So let's get that going. Click record. Get the audacity going. Get the audio going. That's my timer to sync up the audio. Welcome back, guys. Uh, that was segment three. Now there's been an interesting development happening in the chat. 50% uh, of the audience is obviously on the Mandela Effect camp, and the other 50% are on the Skeptic Tank. Tank? <laughs> Skeptic Tank. Skeptic Camp. Ah, uh, jeez. I had a bit of rum before this, so... Um, that whole thing about filming the drinking game, not on the live stream, probably didn't even matter. I could have done it. Um, basically, what's going on is that there were some questions around the whole Sagittarius arm thing, and uh, questions around whether or not I'm going to make a video about that and, and discuss that. And it's an interesting topic because all I've heard about are the third-hand accounts of people who have, who have been affected by the effect. And I've never experienced it myself. When I learned about where we are in, in the universe, it was always the Milky Way. That's as much as we learned. There was never anything specific. And saying that, I didn't go to the best school, as you can probably tell from my live streaming skills. There wasn't a special class in that. Um, so my my takeaway on this where, where i go with um this whole thing is that um the people who normally talk about the sagittarius arm are about maybe a generation above me and my thinking is and i don't have anything to prove this so this is why i haven't made a video about it uh but the science community had an understanding of where we were in the universe there was probably some old textbooks saying this is where we were or uh, some old diagrams or it was just an understanding that the generation before that was teaching the generation before me was verbally giving in class and then when some more defined scientific research came out usually when they correct themselves they're not very <laughs> they're not very humble about it they just say this is what it is now there's i, I don't think that there's a lot of like defined this is what it was and now we're correcting it to this i, I think that's a little bit underhanded and I, th I think it discredits the people who have learned one way there's not a clear this is the new way of us understanding our reality or our universe um, and that's where i think a lot of these misunderstandings come from like this but that's just my take on it i haven't obviously looked into it enough to look at examples and that sort of thing um, but there is a big conversation happening at the moment about different realities um, people being dead that are alive or alive that are dead before blah 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 blah, blah. um it's just quite interesting just to see <laughs> interesting oh we got a new person in chat fucked <laughs> i think that's your name hello fucked uh if you cdt um Oh, cool. The, ch the live stream doesn't seem like it's very far behind me in real life, so that's very nice. Um, D.B. Cooper hijacked a plane and jumped out with the money and a parachute got away. Yes, I love that story. That is That was back in the 70s, I think. Um, and it was a guy who boarded a plane under the name D.B. Cooper. I think they got his name off the manuscript. Um, he made some... Um, demands while the plane was in flight they landed he got like a million dollars which is equivalent to a lot more nowadays and got a parachute the plane took off again he released some hostages kept the rest on including the flight crew um and while he was flying over like i don't know central america he um 
we don't know where he is, Ange, because he jumped out of the plane and and he parachuted and he disappeared. And all they have is like this really random sketch of him um, taken from people who. And, and this is where I get funny about things because I think human memory is tamperable, and, and that's why I'm skeptical about the whole Mandala effect. Um, but maybe I can bring up this image of D.B. Cooper. Is a media epitaph popularity used for reference to an unidentified man who hijacked a Boeing 727 aircraft in the northwest United States in the airspace between Portland, Oregon and Seattle, Washington on the afternoon of Wednesday, 24th of November, 1971. And he's just a Caucasian male. Looks like anyone you'd see on the street. Interesting story, interesting stuff. Kind of distracting from the point of this live stream, but it kind of highlights again the point that live streams aren't an effective media for delivering your your story because you get so distracted, especially if you've had a couple of rums beforehand. Um, the first person to ever hijack a plane. <laughs> but if there's a different reality, maybe he was found in Sagittarius. Mm, interesting. I think there's just... He's, he's just one of those people like the guy the man from Turin. that's an interesting one. Oh, you guys missed this while I was live streaming off my desktop but I've got my first pop-up I've got an invite to someone some, some attractive Russian bride thing I'm glad that didn't pop up while I was patching up this this live stream issue that I had this has gone on long enough I have a closing statement that I'd like to say and I, I worded it really well and re and pre-filmed it so hopefully this will work um, because I can't even remember what I said now. So I'm going to just pop the intro up here and we're going to play that. And hopefully it works. Uh, and, and then we'll come back and we'll sign off this video. And then I'm going to go to bed because I'm feeling a little bit buggered now. Um, so here goes. Transition. One last time. It's not working. That's annoying. <laughs> we're going to have to do the same fix as we did before. Uh, da, 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 da. Final thoughts. Open with. VLC player. All right, we're getting there. Just thinking about it. Um, it's by Big Mac from a clown named MacDonald. Mac with the A. Mick, don't, Mick with an A. Um, yeah, I've never seen it like that. And it's interesting. Because uh, it's a, you know, there are so many franchise restaurants. Maybe they used to spell it like that where you're from. Uh, are you from the States? That's where I, I get that, like, a lot of these uh, disparages with information come from. Maybe. I don't know. Sing us a good night song. No. I'll sing you a final. That's not even going to make sense. I'm going to play a final video for you. Display capture. Transition. Black screen. What's going to happen? Who knows? I'm going to mute my mic and we're going to play this one and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. So thanks for watching so far. I will come back in just a moment. Keep your comments flowing through um, and yeah, see you in a few minutes. Here are my final thoughts, just in case I can't get it together at the end of the live stream and, and talk about this live. At the end of the day, these are all my opinions. And while I think they're fair, I think it's also important to recognize that at the end of the day, YouTube isn't always the truth. And each one of these people that you see here, including myself, this is just a character of who we really are. Laszlo overtly and covertly suggests that he's struggling and that his videos are a major source of income and that your support helps him with his channel and also in real life with his parking fines. I'm screwed for money, like, I've been trying to find a job or whatever, but der, but der, but der. Um, but if you guys could help me out with, like, donations or whatever, I got uh, GoFundMe, Patreon, PayPal, whatever, it doesn't matter, but what I'm trying to say is that I'm, I'm in poverty. I don't, you know, like, just, if you can help me out, um, maybe I'll keep doing what I'm doing. And eventually, I'm gonna go stand-up comedy. That's, that's exa exactly what I want. I think it's fine to be real with your audience like this. Humans are empathetic creatures, and I think that it's pretty sweet that we can band together and support each other in this way. But it turns my stomach when the person playing the sympathy card has needless possessions, like sigh. 
ASF sign. Your radiation detector. You know what? I could be dying from this Wi-Fi router with all the radiation coming out of this thing. I need you guys to look at how much radiation is coming off these routers. It's ridiculous. See, I'm like uh, about four feet away. It's already registering. But that can't be healthy. Anyway, so as I slave on these videos, I'm getting radiated. Draw a brand new studio to make his videos in. And this is my new studio. When we're trying to plead the case that we need the views and the money to survive, it, it doesn't make sense that we're going out and buying these ridiculous things and then in the same breath asking for a donation. I'm, I'm in poverty. Laszlo, if you're listening to this, I think if you left behind the bravado to one side and came at your audience from the real you, people might respect you more. And if your goal is to become a comedian as you say in your videos, then I think you'd find better success in self-aware skits and comedy rather than recycling other skits and bits that you've picked up from Family Guy or recycled from movies that you've seen. Like the joke from your most recent Mandela Effect video, if you haven't deleted it again, um, I'll, I'll show it here. Number 19. Have you ever heard of a Japu de Gabagaba? God damn it. Juba Tikakaba. Jabba Tikakaba. Hey Google, how do you spell... Spell what? How do you say Japu de Kaba? Sorry, I don't understand. Suck. That actually made me laugh, despite myself. But that's just some advice from someone who doesn't even deserve to be called human diarrhea, so take that as you will. Scott, I think he seems like he's genuinely a nice fellow. I, I think he's quite funny at times as well, and he's capable of producing some interesting content for sure. And his audience obviously adores this quality in him, which is commendable. And I think, uh, all of this aside, He'd be an interesting guy to probably hang out with and have a beer with at some stage. It is my belief, however, that he is sadly misguided with his view on the world, and with his maintained belief that he holds a perfect recollection and knowledge of everything. Therefore, any new discovery that he has isn't a wonder to behold from this mysterious world that we live in together, but it's a wedge that further drives him apart from the people who he shares this reality with, convincing him that he's actually from another reality. And that's at the end of the day, I just think that's a little bit sad. Definitely in this world, fonts were developed differently and there are different fonts. When you look at just simple letters, look, look at my name on the screen there. Um, the R's look wrong to me. I've never seen R's like that in my life, where it sort of jits down at the very end. Um, there. <laughs> and then we get to Jimmy. Who boy. Before I got started making this video, I'd never actually seen any of your content, Jimmy Jams. Um, I just needed a third subject to balance things out between these two who I had specifically targeted for different reasons. Um, so Jams TV is really a variety show when you break it down. While he plays up the elements of the Mandela effect, which is something I think genuinely interests him, he also does gaming and, and talks about the entertainment news and rapping industry as well, um, which I actually found really interesting. His coverage of Takasi 69 is that how you say it? I don't know, but all of that is quite interesting, quite no. I mean, he's clearly done a lot of research and he's following the story quite closely, so that's that's really good. That's a really basic sounding description. Um, what I'm getting at is that I don't necessarily think that Jams TV is a bad channel, and my initial prejudice has been challenged in uh, going through his content and learning this, and it's mostly evaporated. I definitely think it's a little raw and imperfect, but I mean, that's what being a human is all about, and YouTube is where humans come to show themselves off. So I think out of the three, uh, Jimmy is the most real. And, and if he ever sees us, you know, I think if we can put our differences aside, man, I'd be keen to squat up sometime in Fortnite, play some duos if you're keen. God knows I could do with the help. <laughs> I suck at that game. Uh, but yeah, PSN, my PSN name is the same as the channel, so hit me up sometime if you're keen. Uh, that that's definitely a collab that I'd be happy to do. Those are my final thoughts anyway. Um, we'll jump back to real life Nick back in the, in the present and you can check out what he's up to and if there's anything else anything else he's thought of to say in the meantime. But this has been Mandela Madness, the method behind the madness, part three, the final, the live stream. I've enjoyed making it. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And uh, back to you live Nick. Like I sound like a wanker in retrospect. I hated having to hear that. Uh, <laughs> um.
that's the end of the video guys basically so thanks for sticking by my three loyal viewers uh and the the heated chat that went on about whether or not there was a gun in the wizard of oz um <laughs> scarecrow never had a gun damn right he didn't let scarecrow wizard of oz da, 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 da. he does now he doesn't have rain um there is a scene where they're attacked by the wicked witch in the forest and he pulls out a gun it's like for one scene only it's never referenced again um um scotty balo thanks i enjoyed it thank you man i enjoyed that uh, i'm glad that i could have somebody who is in that camp who i'm, I'm effectively like ag against those beliefs that you're against as well but that you could enjoy my content so i'm glad that you did i, I hope i gave you something to think about i, I like that you like my animation because that was 90 percent of the production went into doing that uh you know five minute segment um and i respect that you've dropped by and that you have watched this as well because um i can't imagine like, I, i've been in that situation where you just watched the movie uh wizard of oz nice uh, i've been in that situation before where i've and it was right after i released uh i think it was a video on laszlo and i was like this whole thing is, is fake and then i got into a situation where i encountered my own personal mandela effect and at the time i was like this is just i, I get how they feel now this is fucked this is totally fucked and it was all about a singlet that i got out of my drawer and put on the bed and then i went and brushed my teeth and then i came back to put the singlet on and it was i couldn't find it and i opened the drawer and it was in the drawer again and my wife was asleep and i was like how the, how did this happen and so i got it out i put it on and i rode my bike to work and i was like what the hell is going on and it, it concerned me so much because of the stance i've taken and i rang up my wife and said have you can you see if i've got a white singlet anywhere in the room she's it's on the bed and it's under a fold in the blankets because i have two of the same one um but for a moment in time i was suspended in this belief of like actually my whole reality is undoing um so i appreciate the feeling that you get i don't want to make it sound like i'm saying you're you're blatantly wrong but i think there is a logical conclusion to reach and i think that the mandela effect as an explanation stops us from reaching out and seeking that truth and that that truth is so vital because it allows us to get past these kind of like these barriers that we're putting up and keeping relationships with people and, and that sort of thing um the dark side of the rainbow video great stream nick thank you weird 100 percent sure uh I, i've lost track with what's happening in the chat there's too many things going on here and there um so if you got to the end of this and there was any issue with the quality i'm i'm re-uploading this i'll put this as a disclaimer at the beginning of this video or in the description at some point um if people are tuning in to watch this later uh, better quality video where i fix those issues with the <laughs> the last two segments so that everything runs seamlessly uh and i'll upload that as well um we obviously didn't our, our we got no bites on our hook for scott Laszlo or for Jimmy Jams. So if you guys see this, and uh, I always read the comments, chuck down below what you guys are thinking about what I have to say about you. Um, and yeah, that's that's the end of the live stream. So I'm gonna eat this Whitaker's peanut slab now, which uh, <laughs> is my special reward for doing a good job. That's it. That's all for me. Ta ta. See you later. Have a great weekend, guys. See you later.